that's where the cold goes in. Whoa, Edder, we be the best train drivers ever. Beep, beep. Glad you like it, boys, because whoever's crowned tomorrow's winning guide will be allowed to drive this train for real. Come on, Ed, let's go. And don't forget, the loser must pay a gruelling forfeit. Oh dear. So that's it. The twins have been told everything they need to know to guide tourists around by Navan. And now comes the hard bit. Edder, okay? I think we learned a lot of cool, interesting facts. Now all we gotta do is remember it. Well, we need to remember it because you're going down. Edder, I'm totally gonna remember, okay? I have a mind of, like, an elephant. If you say so. So with all the facts safely in their brains, Jed would have finished for the day. You're going to lose tomorrow. No, you're going to lose. Oh, all right, I'm up, I'm up. It's 7 a.m. on day two, and a group of tourists are in for the surprise of their lives when they find out who's going to be guiding them around. I'm not really sure who's going to be showing us around. I don't think I'm going to win anything today. The power of positive thinking. The twins are now in competition with each other to guide the tourists around. You guys are losers. You are a winner. John is being helped by Richard and Edward is assisted by Cal. We're going to kick your hair. Kick your hair? So which team will give the best tour? Who will face a messy forfeit? Time to find out. There's the bus. There's the people. Tour bus is here. What's up, guys? John Guys, guess what? Can we have our celebrity friends, Richard Whisker and Cal Spellman? Yes, yes, no say. Are you guys ready for a tour? Yes! Yeah. Buckle up, let's go! To decide which team will be the winner, the tourists will face a test at the end of the day, so every fact they deliver really counts. Come on, guys, go! You guys excited? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. First up, it's John and Richard. They need to explain the origins of the Industrial Revolution and what key ingredients were needed. You guys are probably wondering, okay, why Blynavin was so successful here, the Industrial Revolution here. It, it's because they had all three sources for making iron. Tell them, Richard. Right, basically, this is coal. What's it called? Coal. What's it called? Coal. I this can't hear you louder. Coal. Right, the right. second source was? Iron ore. Really, really heavy. It's a two hander. What's it called? And what's the last one, Richard? I think it's called, um... Limestone. limestone. One line, he's stone. Together we are... Limestone. limestone. Put them all together, you get iron. What do you get, Richard? Iron! What do you get? Iron! You get iron. So, John and Richard made the tourists repeat the facts, which they hoped could give them an advantage. Clever. Now it's time for Team Edward to take their first tour. Oh, well, we know all our facts. Definitely. I'm actually serious, okay? We're going to be so much better. We, we got to go all out. They're going down the mine and must get across the age of the youngest children who were employed underground. Okay, that's everyone. I am ready to teach. Come on, everyone. Mind your heads. Guys, okay, it's really hard work down here. Okay, How would you guys feel working down here? Five years of age. Miserable. Skid. Skid. Wet. What type of jobs did the children do? Good question. And one that any tour guide should be able to answer. Wait, what was it? Wait. So good. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I was no one told me. Awkward. Edward's gone blank. Can you save the day, Kel? Please say you can. You've got to remember, like, it was down to yes. the adults and the children for doing all the work that we have all the time. Answer the question, Kel. Down the mine working in conditions like this. He doesn't know. And the candles will blow out. They just have to be down here and wait for someone to get them. Edward decides to change the subject, phew, and show the tourists exactly what it was like to work in the dark. Everyone trying to light up. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my god! god! <laughs> what? So Where's Cal gone? You don't know? Watch you guys don't know, there was horse down here as well. Think about it, all the horses now are like running around, eating hay, but they were down here doing loads of hard work. I think you guys know everything. Let's get out of here. Everyone say bye to the coal mine. Bye, coal mine. Bye, coal mine. So did Team Edward manage to make the tourists remember anything? The horse thing was brilliant. You know? It's quite scary and a bit funny at the same time. It's quite a shock. Yes, fabulous. I think they learned their facts well. So that's a thumbs up from the tourists. Oh, oh, oh. Love, love, friends.
Now Team John are taking them to the ironworks, and it's important they mention how many furnaces were once here. This is a furnace. What is it? A furnace. Okay, and here in the ironworks in Blind Avenue, there were six of them. How many? Six. six. All right, okay. Explain and what a furnace is. Do you want to know, explain what a furnace is? A furnace is, okay, basically where we're standing right now, there used to be a, a huge, massive tea, teapot. It was, like, it, was like, it was like a massive... A huge, massive teapot? Is John making this up? It was 1,500 degrees. Wow. Isn't that hot? That is really hot. Me and John are going to show you how hot and smoky and horrible it used to be years ago, working in it. Put this on. Hang on. Safety goggles? What are they going to do here? <clears throat> Meanwhile, Team Edward have decided that dressing up is the key to getting facts across. We are Spellman and Crimes Victorian estate agents. Right, you ready are, Ready to chap. sell this stack square cottages to these tourists. Good accents, guys. Now, back to Team John. And what exactly are they up to with those safety goggles? Are you ready? I'm ready, John. I'm ready. John releases a smoke device to recreate Victorian working conditions. Here we go! The smoke's coming for us! <laughs> oh dear. How on earth do the tourists remember any of the facts from all that smoke? <laughs> Oh, get me out! Ugh. It's so scary! <laughs> now it's back to Edward and Kel. Is that a spot? Good day, good day. We are Spellman and Grimes. I've got to tell you something. I'm still Edward from January. We're not actually Victorian state agents. <laughs> They're here to show you the Stack Square cottages. These cottages have all the amenities, all the facilities that you would ever want. You have no toilet? No bathroom, no running water. It's very minimalist. Let's check it out. One detail they must get across is the system of payment used by workers who once lived here. So this is uh, the main bedroom. This is where everyone will sleep. And if you get a house here, you'll also get a job in the ironworks. But they don't pay you in money. They pay you in tokens. And then you would buy all your stuff at our company shop. And that's called the truck system. What's it called? The truck system. And we'll charge you 30% more because we want to. All right, so would you like to try out the beds? That's it, get nice and close together now. Do you like the straw? Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we'll leave you there and see if you uh, get used to it. And then you can come back and buy the property. So, bye-bye. Peace out, people. A faultless performance. So with only one story left for each team, the pressure is starting to get to Richard. Really, really worried right now because I need you to tell me some facts. No, 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 don't be stressing, okay? You what? must tell me some facts what? now. No, no, no. All I know is this is a canal, this is a boat. Guess what? What? We got props. Check it out. We got a horse outfit. Don't wear a cape. Let's, Let's do this. For John and Richard's final story, they must show the tourists how canals work. And they're hoping their horse costume will give them the edge. But this is a canal. What is it, Richard? It's a canal. Yeah. Richard, what can you tell us about the canal? Um, this is a boat. A long boat? No, no, no. It's called a narrow boat. It's called a narrow boat. Wide. Yeah, guys, how wide is the boat? 2.1 meters wide. We're ready to pull this bar. Are you guys ready for us to pull a boat? Yeah! Let's do this, Kate. Pull. We're pulling. Yes. Horsepower. Right. That frankly rubbish horse costume has left the tourists bemused. And having watched that mess, Team Edward are feeling rather confident. I think we can do a lot better if I'm honest. Yeah, and John's hair's fluffed. Yours hasn't. My hair's still standing. That's what we do. And finally, the tourists make their way to the railway station for their last story of the day. Out of here? Up there in the air! Oh! Let's hope it's a hair-raising performance. <laughs> Attention, everyone. We've got some very, very important stuff to tell you. Yes, well, you are now aboard a revolutionary item known as the steam train. This train is made of steel, which... Iron. Iron. <laughs> Iron, oh, guys, okay. Team Edward must name the locomotive that won the race to be the first passenger steam train. And Edward is now going to tell you the names of the trains. I can't remember. <laughs> I took a tour yesterday, but I wasn't listening because I was too focused on my hair. You've let the team down. I haven't let any team down. Why weren't you listening? Well, John should have been here, but it's okay. But okay. 
The tourists' faces say it all, and Edward and Kel know it. I think we messed up there, you know. Kel, we didn't mess up. I messed up. It wasn't your fault. No, it's, listen. If we, uh, no, because you know, I, we got I on had the together. torch. You had to relax yesterday. I, I went and got the facts, okay? I had to get the facts and tell you the facts, and that's something I forgot to tell you, so neither of us knew it. So We got on together. Yeah. Their fate is now in the hands of the tourists. It's time for the big test. The tourists will be asked one question on each of the stories. For each correct answer, there's a point for the team that told that story. There was one question I struggled on a bit with the furnaces. Here we go, it's the snow's coming! I think the smoke like like jacked my memory. Everything like before that just went out of the window. Cal and uh, Edward really made more effort. They dressed up. Uh, we are filming and crimes, victorious state agents. They made it fun and enjoyable, so it was easy to remember. Ah! Where's Cal gone? <laughs> I remembered more than I thought I was going to remember. So it looks like it's neck and neck between the teams. Richard Kate, it's so important for us Kate, to win his case. We get to drive the train. I feel cool it would be for us to drive the train. And we're able to drive it. I don't think Edward can drive. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I don't want to eat the I can't lose. I don't want to eat the gruel. Gruel's not good for you. It's the moment of truth. Which team has won the most points and will get to drive the Victorian steam train? My heart's racing. And which team will face the gruel bowls of doom? <laughs> to reveal all, it's over to Ian the Miner. With 21 points, it's Edward and Cal. No! <laughs> oh. yes. John and Richard have scored a total of... It's a victory for John and Richard, winning by a massive 10 points! Yeah. As winners, they now take their prize, a once-in-a-lifetime chance to drive a steam train. Come on, Richard, okay, we did it so yeah, well, cool! Done. Let's learn how to drive this train! Woo! Let's do this! Let's do it! Yeah! <laughs> While the losers must now face the forfeit to eat two huge bowls of Victorian gruel. I mean, Oliver Twist ate better food than this. No, he didn't. 